Alright guys, Hatch Comic again today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Black Ops 6 is not all that far away at this point and Shotzi has revealed that as far as he is concerned, players will need to master the movement if they want to master this game. He reckons because the maps are so small or medium and the way the movement is designed, any Iron Boots players or players that haven't really liked to abuse the movements over the last couple of years may seriously struggle when it comes down to the end of the game, even potentially telling his own teammate Dashi, definitely learn the movement as best as you possibly can, otherwise it may come to serve as a disadvantage. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. A couple of pieces as well on the Warzone stuff, of course. We've talked about some of this drama over the last few days. Biffle was the main player, really, who dominated the tournament again at the World Series of Warzone. I think it was in Vegas a couple of days ago now. And look, he's going to commit, of course, to compete over there for another year. There are questions about this, right? Because, well, as people are saying, well, another 365 days of reviewing VOD in Warzone, resetting lobbies, doing online qualifying, fires dealing with broken metas and to be fair right many of these issues are also true of you know players in competitive cold but there might be an argument to say well the money's good but um you know is it a better lifestyle just making content or is it a better lifestyle playing in competitive cards because biffle is probably the only warzone player who would actually get an offer from a cdl team or at least be in the conversation too there's still some debate as well you know maybe you've got to grind it out in challenges if you wanted to make that transition and that might be fair enough but we think that biffle has at least been on the borderline of getting a cdl offer before and um you know definitely a talent enough player to potentially make that work there was some talk as well from gorgo knight on exactly what you might want to do with the format over this because it's just a bit confusing even trying to follow competitive Warzone, what happens over the course of the year. Jake Hall is like, look, maybe the CDL structure they could kind of imitate, right, and go down that route. That's certainly possible. I think at the same time, there is some thoughts, even, I mean, Krim mentioned this a few years ago, right, on what the point would be in terms of actually trying to make competitive Warzone part of the overall competitive Call of Duty product and whether it could replace, which would be a concern, anything around the Call of Duty League, right? I mean, Krim made, it was a joke really, but it was like, well, the third game mode was going to be Warzone or whatever. And, um, you know, there was a feeling that maybe the World Series of Warzone and the CDL might overlap on some level. And maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. I mean, we saw, what was it, a couple of years ago now in Raleigh for the first event of the Modern Warfare 2 season. They had the Call of Duty League stuff. They had the Call of Duty Mobile World Championship. They had other things going on. Would it make sense to have kind of like everything competitive COD happening alongside each other? other potentially at the same time that I'm sure would be something that Adam Apicello would talk about or consider and of course he would like to bring in Halo and maybe Starcraft or other games as well on similar weekends. This I thought was quite interesting too in terms of like the levels of competitiveness in let's say World Series of Warzone or Warzone Esports because there was talk about the fact that only the best team really were the ones actually reviewing VODs. There's loads of other top teams with top players on that they don't bother like reviewing Warzone VOD of their opponents or what they should do or looking back games so you know it's just one of those things isn't it when there's some level of competitiveness and even like cdl teams some teams for sure review vod more than other teams do but um you know mostly it's been pretty baked into the culture that you're going to review your own gameplay you're going to review gameplay of other teams and that's like the known thing some teams will do more than others in warzone it's like maybe one team does that the others just kind of wig it right so you know, maybe it shows something on the level of competitiveness, but I did think this is interesting. The overall KDs of all of the players on day two in order. So um, Biffle had a 4.6, pretty absurd. Aiden, obviously Shifty's here, Hasoka's here. That's the uh, the three guys that won the entire thing. What do you guys think here, if you guys haven't seen this yet, is the lowest KD on the day two? And do you guys think you could do better than it? That's the question. So yeah, as we scroll down, we get other players. You get all the way to the bottom, you will find, of course, plenty of players on a 1kt you'll go all the way down to you know the player 120th reload with a 0 0.2 0 0.21 0 0.27 0 0.28 and um you know goes up from there obviously so um yeah could you guys do better than a 0 0.2 obviously these are all the best players in the world so there's a debate and you know sometimes you get a bad day it is what it is but definitely some pretty juicy stuff as far as i'm concerned right but let's talk about the optic boys and exactly what might be going on for them this season because they had a phenomenal year in many respects obviously they won the world championship and major three their hard point record this year was very good but it wasn't outstanding unless you exclude which obviously isn't really fair but if you do if you get rid of teams not named phase 
They only lost four half points all year. They lost one to Toronto, one to Thieves, one to New York, which is towards the end of the year. Was this, uh, maybe this is at Champs, I think, actually, wasn't it? When um, they were in, they played earlier on, and this was to, I think, take it to a game five for the subliners. And then the other, it's crazy, right, that they only lost three hard points in the entire regular season, excluding, of course, games they played against FaZe, which they lost a fair few, but um, you know, interesting nonetheless. And then the other one they lost was at the World Cup, right, where they played Omit Brooklyn in the group stages. They lost that real hard point game one, and then, of course, they went on to do rather well from there. So, um, yeah, pretty crazy to think about, right, how good Optic were, but, of course, FaZe did generally have their number, although Optic Optic, you know, got the job done when it really mattered. But Shotzi has played a lot of the beta. Of course, it was out for the last couple of weekends. He's grinded basically every single hour that was possible to play. And the question has then kind of transferred into, all right, how important actually is the movement in this game? Because we saw in a game like, let's say, well, I was going to say Black Ops 3, and I will in a second, but Advanced Warfare, for example, when that game first came out and the advanced movement was first becoming a thing, people didn't really know how much of it to use. And honestly, looking back at those titles, a player like Skump, for example, he wouldn't be like a movement abuser. Skump was arguably, well, probably was, the best player in Advanced Warfare, Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, certainly from an SMG perspective. But it's not like Skump was a movement demon, right? Like, Skump would be able to use the movement where effective, but he would be incredibly good, as he always was, at knowing when to pre-aim, when to lock in for a gunfight, how to position himself and like at the end of the day you're always going to be more effective if you're pre-aimed and ready for a fight than you are if you're just flying around a corner not really knowing where the other guy is going to be and that was kind of Scump's modus operandi and that was very effective back then but of course the movement was also valuable and towards the end of Advanced Warfare towards the end of Black Ops 3 you saw that you know players that were able to use the movement to the best of its ability I mean nowadays Black Ops 3 is kind of absurd with all the wall run and everything that's been happening over there and the wall bouncing that people have come up with over the last few years and all this type of stuff that it does impact the gameplay so in black ops 6 How's it going to work? Because the movement definitely takes a bit of getting used to. The idea that you can slide and aim down sights at the same time. The idea that, you know, maybe you can backwards slide off a ledge and then hit like a little bit of a buddy hop. And, you know, all the things that are possible here with the Omni movement in this title, it is going to take some learning and it's going to take some getting used to. Is it going to be overly abused by some players? You know, people have called TikToksy or whatever over the last few years. But I feel like when Shotzi uses the movement, certainly as he grows to learn it more, more, it will be, you know, positively impactful on his playstyle. But Shotzi was questioned really on, you know, how important actually is it going to be to the game? If you are an AR who doesn't want to use it, just wants to hold an iron, are you going to be able to get away with that? Or are you going to get slammed by a guy, another AR, potentially dolphin diving around a corner while shooting in midair? That is the concern if you are like a traditional AR player, as it were, because this does not seem like it's going to be a traditional game. So that's Shotzi's perspective based on the maps and based on some other features as well that a slower AR player might well struggle. It's cool because they added like a different element to the, like any any game that I've played because every other game it's legit WASD, right? And the analog stick it's up, down, left, right? Whereas if like Omni, it's like you legit control your fucking character. Any direction you go, it's like bottom left, it's going bottom left. You know what I'm saying? It's going in diagonal directions, left, right. Um, and then not only that, you can literally slide. And slide and shoot at the same time. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that like every other COD, you could slide and shoot. But the thing is, you wouldn't be able to like aim in. In this game, you could actually aim in while you're sliding. So it kind of looks pretty turnt. But uh, yeah, no, I, I enjoyed the beta. I think it was fun. Ain't Halo kind of like that? There's a clip. Uh, yeah. Like, could. if you do, like, a long slide or whatever, you can, like, shoot while you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. I saw a clip of Brandon, <laughs> Brandon playing, and he was like, yo, Ant, you do all the you do all the turn shit. I'm just gonna iron. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> and I think... Uh, I Do you think that'll be able to happen, or do you think it's gonna get cracked? I feel, like, I feel like at first it's gonna... This is how it is every game. At first it's gonna be like, all right... You know, it's going to be pretty cracked or whatever. And then, like, eventually it's to a point where, like, the meta is going to be set and everyone has to do that. And I think it, towards the end, it'll be legit everyone flying around, fucking ARs diving around. Oh, really? Shit. You think it'll be like that? Yeah, just because, like, the maps are pretty small, bro. I'm not going to lie. Like, Dude, the maps are. They're, like, medium tiny. maps or, like, 
small, in my opinion. Because like, yeah, I remember they, they said it. They said it to us at Con Next. They were like, "We've we've noticed that people enjoy the small maps. Like the only the only maps that like transcend and like go down in history as the best maps are like medium sized maps. So yeah. we have no large maps, only small and medium maps. And then I was like, okay. I I like that as long as they're all like standoff raid high rise style like that that medium dog there's not they're all tiny <laughs> they're all tiny really <laughs> yeah I remember looking this shot I'm not fucking moving it <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight I'm straight I, the only thing I'm using is the the left and right on me I kind of fuck with that like the fucking I'm like, like, you know, like moonwalking, yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I'll like glide. I'll hit like a little like side. Like this, yeah, it's fucked. Like, yeah. Fuck, that was awkward. But and I promise you, there's just I'll let you do the all the sauce, bro. <laughs> I'll be ironing. I'm ripping though. <laughs> so I shared the clip there of what Dashi had to say when he was like, "Look, maybe and you do the movement. I'll just sit back here and pre-aim." And Shotzi's perspective is that isn't really going to fly. And if you try and do that, it's going to backfire pretty massively, mainly or at least partly because of the map design as it currently seems to be in Black Ops 6. Hitch actually said that the developers basically told him, yeah, we believe, and it seems to be the case, that the player base tends to enjoy more so the faster paced maps with the smaller to medium sized maps. So they are pushing in that direction. And that could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. There are plenty more medium sized maps around when the game officially launches. Hopefully they play pretty well for competitive, but Shotzi's feeling is there's going to be lots of close quarter combat, lots of um, you know close range fights, and as a result, the movement is going to be ever more important than just sitting on a head glitch and pre-aiming. I think at the end of the day, every single COD game that I've ever seen, when you watch the likes of Skump play, you know, he uses the movement, he doesn't like overly abuse the movement, but he's just so well prepared for the fights that it doesn't really matter. So, you know, I'm being intrigued to see what, you know, this actually arrives for Shotzi here, because I think when the game launches, I wouldn't be surprised if an Iron Boot AR is going to do pretty well, because there are going to be players that are flying around corners, sliding around corners, trying to use the money movement to the best of their ability, and they're not always going to perfect it, and someone set up on a head glitch is probably going to take advantage. But at the end of the game's life cycle, I definitely see the argument that as players get better and better with the Omni Moon, because I think there's so much depth to it, having played it for a couple of days, and certainly this is the case for Shotzi, like, you know, there's so much improvement that you can make in your ability using the movement over time, that I think the concern would be if you're an AR player and you don't try to learn it as least as well as you could do, then by the end of the game's life cycle, some SMG players, like to Shotzi, Hydra, etc., are going to be running rings around you, and, you know, you might be getting dropped for an AR who has a bit more pain and has the ability to use this type of stuff. So it is going to be interesting for the likes of a, you know, an accuracy, for example, a slasher, right, for example, even obviously, you know, Zinni is no longer competing, but players of that kind of ilk, right, Clayster is a faster player for sure, but, um, you know, the, and even Insight is kind of an interesting kind of modern day one. Sky is maybe a similar argument. Slower AR players, more methodical AR players. And Dashi has also been that for Optic last year. Now, is Dashi incapable of using the movement? Obviously not. But, um, you know, the point would be from Shotzi that, okay, maybe, Brandon, you will want to learn it. You will want to take advantage of what is possible here because otherwise we might be getting exposed at the end of the game's life cycle. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all of this stuff in the comment section below. Just one final thing thought was pretty cool here from CDL Info. Kenny, obviously, we talked about him yesterday. Shotzi's perspective on Kenny as a player, how much he's helped him on his his team 2018 rookie of the year 10 now tournament wins 15 grand finals appearance is very impressive because two of those additional grand finals appearances that he didn't win were world championship grand finals so kenny could be a full-time world champion he's won for three different orgs and in the cdl era he now takes the crown as the winningest player i'm pretty sure from priester over the last season so hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time